everybody, welcome back to our second part of our 4.4 lecture video on adding and subtracting fractions. So with this video, all we're going to do is a lot of examples. So if you just needed some more examples, this is the video for you. All right, the next example we have is 3x over 5 plus 7. If you ever have something like this where it doesn't look like it has a denominator, the denominator is 1, if that kind of helps your brain a little bit. Um, so my least common denominator, I have 5 and 1, so the only denominator I really have is 5 and 1. 5 times 1 would be 5. So my least common denominator in this one is 5. So then I'm trying to get both fractions to have that LCD. So the first fraction already has it, it'll say as 3x over 5. The second one, if I want it to have at least common denominator, I want it to have a denominator of 5, I would multiply by 5 in the denominator and the numerator. 7 times 5 is 35. Now that they have the same denominator, I can add them together. Um, so in the numerator, I have 3x plus 35, which is, they're not like terms. So there's not a lot I can do except for just put them as they are. So I have 3x plus 35. And the denominator stays the same, it's all over 5. That's what the answer looks like for this one. And in case you were wondering, hey, could I simplify the 35? 5? You cannot. And the reason is because the 3x is not also divisible by 5. Remember that to simplify a fraction, you divide the numerator and denominator by the same thing. So if you divide it by 5 in the numerator, you've got to divide everything which would include that 3x, and it does not divide nicely by 5. Okay, so this does not simplify anymore. Let's do another one. I've got 4z over 5 minus 3z over 20. What do you think my least common denominator is going to be on this one? All right, if you are saying 20, you are correct. So my least common denominator would be 20. So I want 20 to be my denominator for both of them. To go from 5 to 20, you would multiply by 4. So I will also multiply that numerator by 4. 4 times 4z is 16z. Let's see, 3z over 20 already has the denominator that I'm looking for, so it will stay the same. It'll still be a 3z. Then I can actually subtract. 16z minus 3z is 13z. My denominator is 20, it stays the same, and it doesn't simplify any further, so we're done. The next one in part F have 7 ninths minus negative 1 twelfth. First thing your brain might be telling you is, hey, it has a minus a negative. Minus a negative is the same thing as plus a positive. Good. Uh, so let's go ahead and find our least common denominator so we can get going from here. So 9 is 3 times 3. 12 would be 3 times 4, and 4 is 2 times 2. So my least common denominator for this one, I'm going to need two twos, and I'm going to need three threes, or sorry, two threes. So then that'll be 4 times 9, which is 36. Okay, so I want 36 to be my denominator for both of them. To go from 9 to 30, I'll multiply by 4. So I'll do that in the denominator and the numerator. 4 times 7 is 28. To go from 12 to 36, I'll multiply by 3. And again, I'll multiply the denominator and the numerator by the same thing. 1 times 3 is 3. Now I'm actually ready to add. 28 plus 3 is 31. The denominator stays the same. So my answer is 31 over 36. And that doesn't simplify any further, so I am done. Are you guys about ready to try one? Great. I'm going to let you guys try G and see how it goes, okay? So give G a try, see if you can find your least common denominator, make your equivalent fractions, and then add or subtract. And I'll give you guys the answer here in 3, 2, 1. Your least common denominator should be 14. Minus a negative is the same thing as plus a positive. So then you'll have negative 10 over 14 
plus 7 over 14, which will give you negative 3 over 14 as an answer. All right. H is a little interesting because you have a variable in the denominator. That variable just counts as another uh, vector. So when you're making your least common denominator here with the 20, let's see, 20 is 4 times 5, 4 is 2 times 2, 15 would be 5 times 3, and then you also have this as a factor. But for your least common denominator, I'm going to need two twos. I'm going to need a 3. I'm going to need a 5. It doesn't matter which one you take, um, but you'll need one. And you're also going to need an x. It's one of the factors in the denominator. Then let's multiply it out. Let's see, I've got 2 times 5 is 10. 2 times 3 is 6. So 6 times 10 would be 60, times x would be 60x as my least common denominator. So that's what I want my denominator to be for both of them. For my first fraction, going from 20 to 60x, well, to go from 20 to 60, I'm going to multiply by 3. And then to get that x in there, I'm actually going to multiply by 3x to get there. So then 3x times 1 is 3x. In my second fraction, to go from 15x to 60x, well, to go from 15 to 60, you multiply by 4. And it already has the x, so all you need to do is multiply by 4. 8 times 4 is 32. And a little trick for you guys, if it helps at all, um, that 15x, if you look at my list for my LCD, the 15x was the 3, the 5, and the x. So the things that it was missing from my LCD list was 2 times 2, which would be 4. Whatever it's missing from the LCD list is what you multiply by to get to that least common denominator, okay? Uh, now that we're here, we've got 3x minus 32. They're not like terms, so they're just going to stay as 3x minus 32. The denominator is 60x, and we are done. And yet again, if you're tempted to simplify, like, oh, can I simplify those x's? You can't, because the 32 doesn't have an x. So you can only simplify if everything is divisible by the same thing. All right? Last one here is I. I'm going to let you guys have one more try. So try I. See if you can get that LCD. See if you can make some equivalent fractions. Um, and see if you can add or subtract. And I'll give you guys the answer here in 3, 2, 1. Your LCD for this one, assuming you didn't simplify early, your least common denominator for this one is going to be 80. So once you make those equivalent fractions, you're going to have negative 112z over 80 plus 40z over 80 plus 8 over 80. When you add or subtract, because you do negative over here, when you add and subtract together, you're going to have negative 72z plus 8 all over 80. And this one actually does simplify. I don't know if you caught it. But 72 and 8 and 80, everything is divisible by 8. So you can actually divide by 8 in the numerator and denominator to simplify this one. So negative 72 divided by 8 would be negative 9. So we'll have negative 9z plus 8 divided by 8 is 1. I know it's really tempting to be like, oh, they cancel out. They don't. They actually make a 1. So 8 divided by 8 is 1. The denominator, 80 divided by 8, is 10. So negative 9z plus 1 over 10 is our answer for part I. Alrighty, in example 3, we have a nice little application problem. We are finding the perimeter of the figure on the right. So this is a nice little quadrilateral. Uh, one side is 1 half of a foot, another side is 3 eighths of a foot, about two thirds of a foot and three quarters of a foot. And we are supposed to find the perimeter. If you guys remember, perimeter is adding all the side lengths together. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to add my side lengths. I'm going to add one half of a foot plus three eighths of a foot. All right. Plus two thirds of a foot plus three fourths of a foot. 
All right. Let's see. My least common denominator for this one is going to have three twos and a three. So that would be 24 for my LCD. To go from one half to 24 as a denominator, I'm going to multiply by 12 in the numerator and denominator. So I'll multiply by 12 and multiply by 12. 12 times 1 is 12. To go from 3 eighths to having a denominator of 24, I'm going to multiply by 3 in the numerator and denominator. 3 times 3 is 9. To go from 2 thirds to 24, I'm going to multiply numerator and denominator by 8. 2 times 8 is 16. To go from 3 fourths to 24, I'm going to multiply by 6 in the numerator and denominator. 3 times 6 is 18. All right. So then when I add everything up, you're going to get 55 over 24 feet. And that is the answer my math lab is looking for. If you're talking to a human being, they're probably not going to like that answer quite as well. Um, because that would be a bit strange to say 55 24 of a foot. Um, if I was talking to a person, I would probably make it into a mixed number. Um, so I think how many times does 24 go into 55? It goes in twice. 2 times 24 is 48. Uh, so I'd have a remainder of 7. So 2 and 7 24 of a foot is better. Um, if you want to get that into feet and inches, well, I know that there's 12 inches into a foot. So if I want to get those into twelfths, I would just divide by two. So that would actually be two feet and three and a half inches, which I think a human being would a lot better. Um, but my math lab is just looking for this one, okay? Last one, it says find the total length of the bolt shown. Well. This part of the bolt is one seven inch, that part is half an inch, and this part is a third of an inch. So if I want the total length, I'm going to add all of those together. I have one seventh plus one half plus one third, and my answer is going to be in inches. So let's see, they have nothing in common, they're all prime, so my least common denominator is going to be seven times two times three. Uh, so 7 times 6, which would be 42. So I want 42 to be my denominator for all three fractions. To go from 7 to 42, I'll multiply by 6. 6 times 1 is 6. To go from 2 to 42, I'm going to multiply by 21 over 21. And 1 times 21 is 21. To go from 3 to 42, now well, let's look over here. If I want to go from 3 to 42, I'm missing the 7 times 2. I would multiply by 14. 1 times 14 is 14. Alrighty. Let's go ahead and add everything up. So let's see, 6 plus 14 is an easy one that gets to 20. And then 20 plus 21 would be 41. So my answer is 41 over 42 inches. All right. Hope this sets you guys on a good path for the week. If you have any questions at all along the way, please let me know. Hope you guys have a great week.